Um, let's see. Don't need that anymore. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, let's see. Nikki's going to lead us in prayer in just a minute. Um, what we'll do is I have the, um, the mystery on my phone. And so, and then I'll just tell you which prayer to lead as we go. Um, and we'll all pray along with you. So let's see, let me just, yeah, I think, no, I want to go to power school first uh, or school. Uh, that's my other class. Okay. So just in terms of announcements, um, today is Thankful Thursday. So um, remember that any monies you donate to Thankful Thursday go directly to financial aid and scholarships. So if you have been blessed and you could like think of it like if everybody gave $5, like if you could give up a Starbucks for like a week whenever, or like whenever you get Starbucks and say, okay, I'm not going to get that Starbucks or I'm not gonna go to In-N-Out or whatever it is, and you could donate that money, that money would go to help students um, to, to come to the school. So uh, if you can, or if your parents can, um, there's how you give. Um, and then coming soon, we're gonna have the mascot move-a-thon. So there's a video here, maybe if we have time um, next week, I can show it in class. But the Guardian Angels are the, the peer team. They are sponsoring a move-a-thon. And it's next week. And the idea is um, to do some type of physical activity, like take your dog for a walk, go to the gym, go if you have a pool, it's still the weather's still pretty good, go swimming. Um, and then you log it on your um, Schoology page for your class. And then um, the the class that gets the most um, minutes logged will get free dress. So, um, and, and again, it's a, a, the peer team, um, they work with uh, Ms. Sharice and Ms. Kim, and one of the things that's been really damaging to us during the pandemic is not being able to be as physically active, and it's not good for our bodies, but it's also not good for our mental health. So, um, this is a great way for us to kind of come together and, um, have a little friendly competition. So that is coming up next week. And then, um, this is floppy. Oh, I gotta put the agenda up for that other class tomorrow. Um, we'll pray, uh, we'll finish up conscience. I, that shouldn't be there, I need to take that out. Um, and then I have a little assessment and we'll go over the assessment. Um, and so we'll go over that today. Next class, you'll have time to work on it in class. Um, it's pretty simple, and you're going to do it in groups this time, so that'll make it easier. Um, and then it, it'll be due by the 28th. Is that right? Yeah, it is. All right. Oh, and, oh, I should have taken it. So the, yeah, if you, hopefully you took your vocab quiz. Um, that's weird. Why didn't I take that off of there? I, I don't know. Um. Okay, so that's the agenda. There's what's going on. All righty, so let's go back and we'll pray. Okay, so we've been praying the rosary and um, today is the Luminous Mysteries. And I think, now I haven't, like if, because normally you probably pray the whole rosary, but we've been just doing a decade, and then I, I haven't been just sticking with one set of mysteries. I've been doing whichever is the mystery for the day. So I think we're on the fifth, the fifth bead. I probably should have written this stuff down. Um, so we're gonna today we're gonna do the fifth mystery, and it's the um, today is the luminous mysteries. So and again, I'm using this Ladate app. Um, and so you could put it on your phone, but if you don't want it junking up your phone, because um, you're not going to use it that much. But if you for like school and stuff, I, I got permission. You can put it on your Chromebooks, and it's really cool. It's got tons of stuff in it, 
Um, I, I used to listen, I, there's a podcast on here I listen to, but, um, I, it's been updated. I didn't even know they had this. So this is really cool. So we'll, I'll read the reading for the mystery and then, um, let's see, it was, Nikki was going to, uh, lead us in the prayers of the rosary. So we'll do one hot hell father. Then we do 10 Hail Marys and we say the glory be and the Fatima prayer at the end. So. Oh, let's do our special intentions. So as we begin today, um, okay, yeah. So as we begin today, um, does anyone have any special things you want to pray for? You could put it in the chat. Um, of course, we continue to pray over the pandemic. Um, we could we pray for prudence that the American people will um, exercise their right to vote. Um, and vote for the candidates with good conscience. We're reading about the conscience, so right? So Amer Americans should look deep inside their conscience and use their conscience to be able to judge who would be the best president for our country and the best, uh, um, you know, how to vote on the propositions and who would be the, the best um, representatives and all that stuff. Um, so we pray for that. Any other special intentions? No, okay. Um, let me mm, put this away so it's not in the way. Okay, so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And we're on the fifth mystery. So um, it's the institution of the Eucharist. The institute, oh, I already said that. Um, while they were eating, he took bread, uh, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, take this, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again uh, the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. A final mystery of light is the institution of the Eucharist, in which Jesus Christ offers his body uh, and blood as food and water under the signs of bread and wine and testifies to the end his love for humanity for whose salvation he will offer himself in sacrifice. Okay, so um, let's see. Nikki, you want to lead us in one hell fa or one our father? Yeah, sure. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed by be by thy name, thy Thank kingdom come. I will be done. on earth it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And now, ten Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed are the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou in the womb, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art amongst thou women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, woman, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are amongst thou, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are amongst thou women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. 
Uh, and now you just do the glory be in the Fatima prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without an end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us of our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in need of thy mercy. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Um, that's beautiful. It's, it's so, it's lovely to hear um, a student leading. So if any of you would like to lead us in the rosary, it's, it, I give you extra credit. It's also, um, uh, it, it's just, I don't know. It, ah, my little heart is so happy um, to hear a, a young person praying in the rosary. Um, so let's see. Um, all right. So we were talking about the conscience. Um, let me, I think I'll leave other hands. So let's, let's recall. So the conscience is a judgment of reason. So, um, reason or the intellect is like a power of your soul. And the conscience is sort of like a sub faculty of reason. And, and what it does is it allows us to make a judgment about the moral quality of a specific act. So um, it's often the metaphor that's often used for it is like a lens. So um, let me get the, um, oh, I had brown because I was drawing blood going in the earth in the freshman class. Um, so if you have like, um, I'm a really visual person, so I'm always drawing little pictures. But um, you have like a person, they have a nose and a mouth. Okay, so the intellect, if we think of the intellect as like a lamp um, that shines light, we know the law, right? The law, the natural law, hang on. Let me, you know what, let me do this on a, a whiteboard. It'll be better. Okay, so thinking metaphorically, if we have a person, there's their nose, their mouth. So you have reason and it's like a lamp. So if you imagine, this is like a lamp with a light bulb in it. It shines light on the law. So we say that the law is, is written on our hearts, right? And so there's an act out here we're contemplating doing. So should I do this or should I not? Because that's what morality is all about in ethics. It asks the question of, of what ought I do? And so we have reason, and it's like a shining lamp in, in the heart or in the mind of human beings. And we know the law as well. The natural law is written on all of our hearts, but we also have, so this guy also has like the Ten Commandments. Um, so he also has the revealed law um, so, uh, so that he can understand, you know, what should I do in this specific case? Um, so the conscience is like the lens through which the light shines and helps us decide, oh, well, should I do this or should I not? Now, because of original sin, because of original sin, remember the will became weak, the intellect became dark, so that's the darkness, and um, the passions became disordered. So the natural law should naturally guide us to what's good, but our passions are disordered as a result of the fall. So a lot of times we have desires for things that aren't good for us, like um, eating tiramisu cake instead of grilled chicken sandwiches or, um, you know, dealing with stress by getting drunk rather than dealing with stress by praying or going for a walk or whatever. So, um, that's why we need God's grace. What God's grace does is it illuminates um, and it kind of wipes the, 
wipes the, the dirt of sin, original sin off the lens of our conscience so that we have a more um, reasonable way to make decisions. Because again, this is all based in reason. Um, using reason, we should be able to figure out what's the best thing for us. Because remember, the good is a function of our nature. And so how do we know what's good for a human being? We look at human nature. And because we're rational animals, what's good for us is not just to act like lower creatures and just do by our, our passions and our instincts. We use reason to, to do what's right and aim for higher goods like truth, justice, beauty, um, and, and integrity or perfect being. Um, so that's just a little review of what conscience is and how it works. I'll save that. Now, um, oh, I'm sorry. There was like three things in the chat. Oh, what slides am I on? Yeah, yeah, it's the Pear Deck. And I didn't, I'm sorry about that. I didn't see the chat. Um, yeah, I'm on the Pear Deck. I didn't put it back in the Pear Deck today because um, I just wanted the Pear Deck to see how you guys were thinking about that little video I showed you. So let me go back. So what we're going to talk about today is um, cases in which our conscience doesn't work well. And, and I said one of the reasons why the conscience might not work well is because of the effects of the fall. So we're going to talk about an erroneous conscience, um, which is a malformed conscience that departs from reason and the divine law. So to be erroneous means to be wrong or incorrect. Now, an erroneous conscience, this is kind of the key point um, that distinguishes it from, say, um, invincible error or something like that. It's a sincere but incorrect judgment. So um, when our conscience can be wrong, and it can tell us to do the wrong thing, but with an erroneous conscience, people are will do things that they think are are right but they're wrong and again the reason why your conscience is be, is wrong because your conscience has to make a judgment based on an objective standard which is the natural law and the, and the moral and the revealed law so that's why we, i emphasize the conscience isn't just a feeling and it's not an opinion it's not like well i think this is okay so that makes it okay Hitler thought it was okay to murder millions of people, but that didn't make what Hitler did okay. And he made it legal. It's not like what he was doing in Germany was illegal. Um, and uh, so, again, erroneous conscience is where um, we sincerely think we're doing something right that's wrong. Or, like, think about a person, like, when my sister was in Iraq, um, one of the, the difficult things the soldiers had to do with was um, there were – you guys don't remember the war, but after we invaded Iraq and destabilized the region, um, insurgents came in from other countries um, and committed terrorist acts. And one of the favorite tactics of the terrorists was to send children uh, suicide bombers into American bases because the Americans didn't suspect that um, they would use their children as bombs. And so they, they were able to kill a lot of American soldiers that way. Um, and so if you have a child who was raised in a home where he was taught that it was good to kill Americans for jihad, um, would he be guilty of that action? Well, no, because he was raised in a house where, where he thought that that was the right thing to do. So that's what an erroneous conscience is. It's where you do something wrong, but you didn't even know you were doing, that there was wrong in the first place. Like, this is kind of a silly example, but I had a student, um, Two years ago, oh, Christopher, I, this kid, he was so funny, um, but we were doing sexual ethics and uh, we had mentioned that um, masturbation is a sin. And he was like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh man, this is great. And of course, what does he say? If that's a sin, I'm going to hell. And then I said, oh, Christopher, you know, and then we talked about, a, he didn't know. And he had no way of really knowing that. He wasn't Catholic himself. So um, uh, he had no way of, of really knowing that. But now that he does know it, he is responsible for it. So, um, so two other related terms are invincible ignorance and Vincible ignorance. So I have the defin definitions here, but I wanted to draw a little um, 
a whiteboard to show you how they're kind of connected. Um, so some of you are like, why does she always do these drawings? But I'm, I'm a visual person. So for, for people who are visual, it helps to have these little schematics. So we said that um, if you have an erroneous conscience, So you have an erroneous conscience. So the question is, it depends on why we've judged incorrectly. Um, it, it, to, and that's the, why your conscience is an error um, determines whether or not you're guilty of uh, the sin. So guilt, uh, um, am I responsible? Um, there's a, a word. It's um, is it imputable to you? It, 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 is the is the guilt of what I've done wrong imputable? So if the if the ignorance was involuntary, um, we call that in, invincible ignorance. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. I'm not a good speller. So that's invincible ignorance. Um, and that means you're not at fault. And so these would, would be ignorance you're not at fault for. Therefore, um, you're not guilty. So again, this would be someone who, uh, so, so maybe you have a tribe of people living deep in the jungle and, and they practice like cannibalism or something like that. Well, there's nobody there to tell them that's wrong. Now, should the natural law have told them it's wrong? Yeah, it should have. But again, we're fallen. So sometimes our, our conscience doesn't always like work perfectly. So there are many cases where you might, you might sin but you're not responsible if you really had no idea what you were doing was wrong. And the only one who knows the truth about those things is you and God. Um, now, there is something else called vincible ignorance. So vincible, so vincible ignorance is voluntary. Whoops, hang on. I don't, I'm, I've got to talk to tech. I, there's got to be a better way for me to do this because I just stink at writing on this screen. Um, maybe I'll try doing it on my Chromebook. I hate that Chromebook. Okay, so vincible ignorance is voluntary. So that means you lack knowledge you should know or you could have known. Um, so, uh, therefore you're guilty for the sin. So, um, for example, if like one of the things like about going to Catholic school and getting to take a morality class, um, that's going to give you a really, really well-formed conscience. So you might learn that some of the behaviors you've been doing are wrong. Um, but if you kind of at that point like well i don't know and you just choose not to not to do the right thing that's vincible ignorance or if you, you've been given the opportunity like i a woman called up to i was listening to catholic radio one day and uh she called up and she's like i heard that using birth control is a sin is that true so she had an opportunity to learn more and she took it if she hadn't that would be vincible ignorance so uh, the priest on the show said, yeah, yeah, it is. And she's like, oh my gosh, what should I do? And he said, well, you didn't know that before. So you don't have to go to, uh, to um, confession and confess that or anything. But from now on, you and your husband need to, you know, figure out, okay, now you guys know this is a sin. Um, what's your plan in the, for the future? So now that you are aware, that at least for Catholics, that's a sin. And we'll talk more about why in, in a couple weeks. But um, 
uh, now that she knows she is responsible for her actions. So I hope that made sense. Um, save. Wait, where's that chat? Oh. Um, okay, good question. So Janae asked, um, how is invincible different from erroneous? So um, an erroneous conscience is a conscience that has erred in its judgment. And invincible and um, invincible describe um, the, the two different terms for two different types of ignorance. So typically, um, an erroneous conscience means you're trying to do the right thing, but somehow you've, you've made an error. So there can be two reasons why you made the error. Either you had invincible ignorance, you just didn't know, um, and didn't really have any opportunity to know the truth, or you have invincible ignorance. So that would be a case, both of these people have conscience and error, but one is responsible and one isn't. So with invincible ignorance, this is someone who's just not trying to have a well-formed conscience. They're just ignoring the rules. And actually, let me go to the next slide because I have a little bit more of on this. Um, what am I? Oh, I know what I need to do. Sometimes I forget what I need to do. This. Okay, so let me go. Oh, yeah, here it is. So, um, conscience frequently asks questions. So, must I always follow my conscience? Yes, you should always follow your conscience. Um, trust it. But if you can't, if you find out your conscience is, conscience is wrong. Um, later on, you're not guilty of a sin. Because again, that would be an example of, of uh, invincible uh, ignorance where, or I mean, invincible ignorance where you just had no idea, you, you couldn't know. Um, and again, you have to be honest with yourself. I have this quote from Gaudium et Spes, the most secret core and sanctuary of any person where we are alone with God. That's your conscience. So if if like you're doing stuff like you know is wrong or you're you're like it might be wrong but i'm just not going to take the time to find out that actually makes you more guilty because then you're also lying to yourself and lying to god and the conscience is is where we're alone with god and and you know the truth and he knows the truth right that's why it's such a, a important core aspect of our being so um yeah your conscience can make a mistake and we looked at some examples now, other factors, oh, yeah, yeah, because the erroneous conscience, so Nikki said, so then invincible and erroneous conscience are pretty similar in the fact that they're both unknown by the person. Yeah, well, an erroneous conscience, it's not that it's unknown, it's just that the person they the conscience makes a judgment right so like in the example i gave of that lady her conscience before she knew said that using birth control in her marriage was okay um we say her conscience is erroneous because that's not true it violates the natural law um but vincible and invincible go to the degree to which somebody's guilty of that is that that woman it was and her husband too because birth control is a, is a, a two-way deal, right? It's a man and a woman using it together. Um, so uh, in that woman's case, um, her conscience was an error, but she had no idea, you know? And, and so she had invincible ignorance. Now, what if she and her husband, now they know? And they're like, uh, well, you know what? We're just gonna keep using birth control because there's no other way to to live God's law and um, control our family reproduction. Well, there is a way. It's called natural family planning, and they just choose not to find out more. Then they would be in error, and we would say their ignorance is vincible because they've chosen not to learn more and not to know the truth. Um, and some other other things that would would lead to to an erroneous conscience are down here. And so I have um, ignorance. So we talked about that one insincerity of vice or rationalizations so something like just saying like oh this is just the way i am um like uh so like rationalizations are when we try to um, make excuses for behaviors deep down inside we really know are, are wrong 
So, um, like, for example, if you have someone who has a bad temper and they're always, like, yelling at people and they go, well, I can't help it. I just have a temper. No, you have free will. You can help it. You're just being a butthead. Um, that would be, like, erroneous conscience. Um, bad examples. So, obviously, that one's pretty easy to understand. If you, like, grew up in a household where like um stealing was okay or or like racism like if you were taught to be racist against other people and to to say racial slurs um obviously that person has a, an erroneous conscience but it resulted from maybe being formed in a household where they um that behavior was acceptable um false autonomy of conscience would be like if you just said to yourself well um uh what are my notes? the so false autonomy of conscience is what the heck? Um, if you would just say something like no one could tell me what to do or the church can't tell me what to do or it's my life I'm going to do what I want well again the conscience is not like the conscience is not the moral law the conscience is the the power we use to judge an action and say whether or not it's in conformity with the law or not um so you can't just like make up your own rules you know um rejection of church teaching so again if you just say well the church is wrong and i'm going to do what i want anyway that's going to lead your conscience to error um lack of true repentance so um obviously uh if we're committing like the same sins over and over again and we're really not trying to stop um like if you go into confession and you confess your sins and you're deep downside, you know you're going to turn around and do it again. Um, that's going to end up making your conscience weaker. Um, and then lack of love. Um, the love is to will the good of the other. And so obviously if we're, um, you know, a lot of times our conscience gets, we can be selfish. And um, that, that lack of love can, can lead to, an, to our conscience to err. Um, and another one that I didn't have on here, I don't know what I wrote, wrote down was um just becoming a slave to the passions uh and this is where virtue and vice come v-i-r-t-u virtue and vice come into play again remember your passions are your appetites um, and emotions so appetites and they're very basic and um, we share them with other all like other creatures so like the appetite for food appetite for sex um and then we have our emotions which are um uh changes in our mental state due to external stimuli so if like a a puppy ran in here my mental state would change and i would get all happy and excited and then if someone kicked the puppy i would get sad and then probably angry that's, you know, your emotions. So um, our, our passions are disordered. So we should be ordered to the good. So if you think of this as like a compass, so we should be ordered to the good, right? But because, and we'll put evil over here, because of original sin and the fall from grace, we became disordered. Now, the graces of the sacrament can get the compass all the most, almost all the way back. Um, but not completely because there's there was um damage done to human nature that even the grace of baptism doesn't take away because it's like a scar baptism is like the suture that shows sews up the scar but you still have the scar like i have a, uh, a scar here um and you know you, if you have scars like sometimes the itch um that's what there's this lasting effect called concupiscence concupiscence is that itchy scar that makes you want to sin so virtue is good habits vice is bad habits and training yourself in good habits actually makes you more free because then your your conscience gets so used to doing judging rightly and your your will gets so used to doing the right thing it just comes naturally but the opposite of that when you you get trained in vice then you're so used to doing the wrong thing you do it like it's second nature and that it can lead to an, a really erroneous conscience and that's why um trying to be virtuous is so important um so it, and it's like 
the, the St. Augustine talks about the example of alcohol. Like he didn't even know about the science of addiction, but we become addicted to bad behaviors, right? And then we're no longer free. We can't even not choose them. Like the alcoholic, he, he just drinks and he doesn't, and it's like, he doesn't even enjoy the alcohol anymore. It's even, it's just deferred, just, just, to, um, taking away the, 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 the purpose and the goodness that was once in it, you know? So, um, that's another thing that can contribute to an erroneous conscience is, um, and if you are, if you are in a cycle of vice, um, because you, you have vice damages our ability to choose, you are not comp always totally 100% responsible for your actions. So like um, a big problem uh, today is like a lot of people are addicted to pornography. And once you become addicted to that, um, that habit's really hard to break. And um, so, you know, when they go to confession, you know, they're, you're not actually 100% if you're in, in a, the throes of an addiction responsible because you 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 damaged your will so badly it's not even working anymore but that's the thing we do this to ourselves that's why living the moral life is so important because if you choose not to you're just gonna make yourself an addict to sin you know so all right so it's 10 o'clock so let me clear this out um I'll save it. I don't know if anyone would want those notes, but I'll save them anyway. Um, oh, wait, no, I just need to go to the next slide. Okay. So for the assessment, for to make sure you understand these, and you guys are asking some really great clarifying questions to try to um, understand these terms. What we're going to do is in your saints groups, I'm gonna have Yins work together to um, present examples of an, just an erroneous conscience, someone who is doing something wrong, but they're sincere, someone who's exhibiting invincible ignorance, so um, someone who has done something wrong, their conscience is erred, but they're not responsible for it. Invincible ignorance, an example of someone who has um, a conscience is in error, but they're just not even trying to make it better, and so they are responsible it, for it. And then finally, someone who has a well-formed conscience. And so I have um, this assignment on Power School, and the way we're going to turn this one in is um, I'll show you, show you different ways you could go at it. Whatever you make, um, you'll you'll put here, or if you choose to do a Flipgrid, the Flipgrid will be on Flipgrid. Um, and you'll turn them into this discussion. For this one, um, I didn't make a requirement that you, you know how sometimes you have, I make you respond to other people's things. Um, I didn't make a requirement to, to do that this time, um, but I would encourage you to do it because um, depending on how you go about this, it could be really fun and really interesting. Um, so this is the a document that describes the assignment. Okay. I should probably ask them, why does that always happen? I just ignore it. Okay. So this is going to help me. It's going to allow you to demonstrate that you understand like how the conscience functions. And like I said, you'll do, um, but erroneous conscience, Vince, invincible, invincible. Is that spelled wrong? Oh, maybe it doesn't know the word. Um, well-formed conscience, and you're going to commu communicate this both with um, orally, uh, and then also have some type of visual aid, and I'll give you examples in a second. So you'll, um, you can either create your own hypothetical examples, or you can use examples from literature, from movies, um, maybe, and you can pick like a theme like YouTube influencers, who's somebody who's, or not, are you, is are there you or is it social media influencers? I don't know. I don't know what an influencer is, but in any case, whatever you're interested in, um, and then you'll present your examples. You'll make sure to verbalize um, why they fit the definition, um, and you'll do this both verbally and then you should have some type of visual aid, like a picture, a GIF, a video, a, original artwork if you like art. Um, and so I 
gave you some ideas of things you could use. You'll do it with your saints groups. So that'll make it easier. Um, but each person needs to have one. So if your saint group has like six people in it, um, you're doing four things. Vincible, invincible, erroneous conscience, um, well-formed conscience. Some, you might have doubles of some of them. So some different tools, and you can use, use something else if you have a, another one you want to use. We, you could use a Padlet, which I think we've used before. It's a digital pin board. You can put almost anything you want on a Padlet. Uh, super easy to use. Very easy to collaborate on. You just share the link, and people can add posts to the Padlet. Um, Book Creator is, um, there's an app, but you can use the web version, and it allows you um, to create free little books, and I'll show you an example in a second. This is my class code to add it to our bookshelf. Um, we're using the free version. It doesn't have collaboration, um, so if, like, your, your classmate, oh, what are they doing? If your classmate, hang on, let me close the door. Okay, sorry. So if um, if your classmate needs to add her part to the um, her part to the book, um, I think you'd have to like. How would you do that? It would make it would be easy in the classroom. Well, I don't know. We'll see if any of you guys choose to use it, and we'll we'll troubleshoot it. I could try try a free trial, and then I would have a free trial of collaboration features. Um, but I guess they could, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> so Book Creator, Flipgrid, um, we use this a little bit. We did our introductions. I've used it a little more with the freshmen. But you can just um, record your, your voice. And then um, for your visual aid, as your background, um, you, you could either, well, you could either show your visual aid or you could use it as your background and record your voice over the Flipgrid. Um, and this is the links for our Flipgrids for our classes. And then Google Slides, I mean, I, I wish you guys would try new stuff, but it is easy and it works. Um, but remember, you're gonna deliver this orally. So if you do Google Slides, you need to drop in an audio file of you doing the explanation. And it's really important if you do that, you have to make sure that the sharing is um, copacetic on that audio file uh, and make sure you put everything in the same folder because it then I won't be able to access the audio or if you did a video of yourself so I have a link here to will show you how to make sure you do that properly if you don't but um, that there that is something that could be a problem um, and then for I, sh I made an example using book creator I'll show you that real quick Hmm? Is it? Yeah, go. Why you no go? No, why? I'm not sure why it wasn't just. Oh, there's the question. Yeah, thank you, um, Emma. Yeah, just one person will turn it into the discussion for the whole group. Um, let me show you. I made an example. Sometimes I don't like making examples because then everybody just kind of copies the example. But then again, if you, if you, you're like, what do I do? All right. So this is a book creator. I, I use just the um, free online account. You can make, um, I think I can, I think together we can make 40 books. So my example was Conscience and How to Train Your Dragon 2. And Mine, I just kept it simple because I had to get this example done. So the names of the people who did it in their block. Um, in this one, I made a mistake. This is actually Vincible Ignorance. Um, I, but when I wrote it up, I made a mistake. So this is, this is Vincible Ignorance. So um, 
I have my image, or this is actually a little video clip. And then you just drop these little doodads in Booker Creator. Here's my analysis. So let me show you the clip first. So, and then here's the analysis. Drago Bloodfist is a good example of Vincible Ignorance. In the movie, he has a conscience that refuses to be reformed. Even when Hiccup provides him reasonable evidence that dragons can be good, because of the vice of hatred, Bloodfist continues to be uneducated and unmoved in his conscience to reform his conscience and change his bad habits. Okay, yeah, so, um, and I didn't write out my answers when I recorded it, so they're not the most articulate. <laughs> so when you do yours, just write it on a little scrap of paper and, um, you know, try not just to, to read it, try to deliver it um, uh, in a, you know, in a good way, but, um, yeah, I, I didn't write mine out. I was just trying to get the example done. So for this one, I don't have a video clip, but it's just um, a picture. So I have my visual aid. And then here's the, this is erroneous conscience. So here's this example. Eric is an example of an erroneous conscience. In the film, he works for Drago Bloodfist trapping dragons because he thinks that's the right thing to do. But throughout the film, he has opportunities to learn that dragons really aren't evil creatures. Unlike Drago, who refused to reform his conscience once new information was shown to him, Eret reforms his erroneous conscience and becomes a friend of the dragon riders. Right. So, and see how the examples, like, is, you guys were asking questions. I think now that we're going through and comparing them, you can kind of see the subtle differences. So Eret, he, um, he was trapping the dragons, too. He thought dragons were bad, too. But unlike Bloodfist, who like Hiccup keeps trying to get him to see reason, because again, remember the conscience is a faculty of reason. It's not about emotions; it's about logic. Um, uh, um, sorry, Bloodfist refuses to educate himself. But Eret, once he learns the truth, and he now knows that dragons aren't bad, he can change his his judgment and say, okay. I'm going to side with the good guys here and help them save the dragons. Um, so, um, Invincible Ignorance, uh, I have a little clip for this one. Here's the analysis for that one. In this clip, we see that the people of Burke were in a state of invincible ignorance prior to Hiccup teaching them the truth about dragons. They'd always known dragons to be evil, and they lived in such a way until Hiccup was able to teach them differently. They weren't responsible for their ignorance because they simply had no way of knowing that dragons were different. In a real way, Hiccup is almost like Jesus bringing them a new gospel, which will change the way they see dragons forever. Okay, and then the last one, a well-formed conscience. And you could do them in any way. Hiccup is a great example of a well-formed conscience. Unlike his father and Drago Bloodfist, who act based on their passions and their emotions, Hiccup uses logic and reason. This is demonstrated throughout the film when he seeks advice from others, when he reflects on the mistakes he's made, and when he changes his actions based on new information. Thus, we can see that Hiccup is open to learning new things, learning logic and reason, and forming his conscience based on his actions. Right. Yeah. And so my delivery was a little stilted because, again, I just I was just trying to get the example created, so I didn't write it out. But um, make sure to craft, and, and that's why it's good to do this in a group because then you can help each other. And and uh, if you have something that that could be improved in your group, your friend could say. Oh, you know, you didn't mention this or that. Add that to it. So um, that's what Yins are going to do for your um, assignment. And what we're going to do is next class. Uh, so I have the timeline here. Um, next class, we're going to, you have the whole class. I'll put you in your... Um, your breakout rooms and you guys can work together to put it together and it should be pretty easy because each one of you could take one of the examples and I chose 
the how you train your dragon um it it works best if you you're uh, if you can like that was all from the same movie um and actually i used to show it in ethics and we used to, i used to have students write papers on it but um uh but you guys are going to find your own examples so you could find your own examples from any anything you want it could be like i said social media influencers movies books um you could do like a theme like conscience and disney movies or something like that whatever you guys like or in the simpsons or i whatever you kids like um or it could even be like you could even find examples of the way people use their consciences in in like on their social media or in their tweets or something like that so um the sky's the limit and you could really depending on how much effort you put into it it can be really interesting and you can have a lot of fun with it you just want to make sure in the analysis just to show how your example fits your definition um and so you'll have all of next class to work on it and then they're due by the 28th to schoology so then if you needed next extra time um so we're here on the 22nd we'll work on this in class on the 26th and then um they're due the 28th so you have the flex day if there's anything else you needed to finish you could do it then but um yeah so that and then um the, yeah so and then we're going to go into our next chapter it's the final chapter in this unit um but arguably the most important it'll be on the on the moral act itself um so oh man i need to get book in here all right so oh, all right so oh the chat um is it homework okay yeah so it's not homework i'm giving you time to work with your groups next class because i think this is something that would benefit from um the insight of others like discussion um and it's also easier to come up with examples if you have more minds thinking about it um now if you don't finish it next class then it would have to be finished as homework but the classes are pretty long so i and you guys are really sh quick witted so you'll you'll be able to finish it um and then I will just be, you'll be in your breakout rooms working and I'll be available if you guys need help with anything to come back and I can help you. Um, and the example, yeah, the example is um, in that document, but let me see. Um, it's in the document, but let me see. I could post the link. So, shh. why not is that the whole code jeez it's a long your code let's see what let's see what happens if i embed this thing um uh, let's embed this thing on schoology and see what happens uh, sorry i don't know why i always make sound effects i bet if i was like born in this day and age they probably would have said i was on the spectrum i mean like you are a crazy lady. You must be on the spectrum. Okay, let me see. I'm, I'm probably not sharing my screen right now. So you're like, what, what is she doing? Oh, edit. <laughs> okay, can I just, I wonder what would happen. Where's okay hang on wait where did my where did that toolbar go i don't know what i do with that toolbar oh well let me see i what if i just open up the html itself and drop it in there Let's see what happens. <laughs> Whoa. But why did it take me away? Hmm. All right. So I, yeah, I put it on, um, it's, it's on, um, Schoology where the, 
in the assignments. I my toolbar to share my screen went away. I don't know where it went. Um, but yeah, if you that's a hang on, maybe I, if I do this. Oh, there it is. Well, in, in any case, it's do you guys what I'll show you. Um uh this is, I guess, the easiest way to get to it. It's not showing up in the upcoming. Um, you could always, it's linked on the agenda or it's, this is the unit we're working on. I think I put it in assignments, even though I think I, I have it in the grade book as a test, because it is a summative assessment. Um, and I figured that would boost grades because it's pretty easy, although you guys did really well on your first test. So it's T3 conscious assessment. If you go here, all the instructions in the rubric are in this doc. And then this, this was my example, if you want to look at it. But again, whoops. Um, hopefully, I'm excited. I think this is going to be really interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. So and you guys can have fun with it. It'll be really neat to see what you come up with. So that's all for today. There's no homework unless you wanna start thinking about your examples. Um, any other questions? No? Okay, then bye, I'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.